Hello, my name is Hannah Morris and I'm an educational psychologist. We've all been affected by the current pandemic and sadly many families have been bereaved. Recently, I've been asked by some parents for advice on how to talk with their children when someone they love dies. In this video, I'm going to give some suggestions for ways you can tell your child about a death and how to support them, including children with special educational needs. This is not an exhaustive list, and every situation is different, and every family and child will have individual needs, but I hope this will provide you with a starting point for if your family are preparing for or going through a bereavement. It can be really tough finding the words to tell a child that someone has died, especially if you're trying to keep it all together yourself. And it's completely natural to worry about how to tell your child that someone they love has died. So what should you say and do? Well, there is no right thing, no perfect words to make the pain and sadness go away. But it is important that you say something, because children will know something's going on and they'll try to answer their own questions if an adult isn't there to help them understand. And this can lead to children becoming confused, anxious or maybe even guilty if they don't know what's happening and don't fully understand it. It may help to have someone with you when talking with your child so you can share the emotion of it together. Whilst there is no easy way to tell a child about death, there are some approaches that I'm going to talk through that may help. Firstly, keep language simple and tell the child a little bit at a time. Think about what information a child will understand based on their age and also their development. Children with learning difficulties or neurodiversity may not be able to understand information in the same way as other children their age. I've included a link below to an Ages and Stages document where you can look at how children typically respond to death at different ages. Secondly, it's okay to use the words died and death rather than descriptive phrases as this helps children know that death is something that is okay to talk about. Also, it prevents younger children misunderstanding and maybe even becoming worried. For example, if you tell a child that their grandfather has gone to sleep forever, then they may worry that they won't wake up when they go to bed. You may have noticed that I've used the words death and died when recording this video. This is to help normalise the sound of the words as you listen, and I would encourage you to say them out loud to yourself a few times as well before you talk to your child. It can help to think through, write down and even rehearse saying out loud in advance what you might say to your child. You could do this alone or with a family member or friend. Another thing to consider is how much information or how much detail to share with your child as children can become easily overwhelmed, especially children with language or processing difficulties. You can do this by giving a small amount of information then encouraging your child to ask questions so that you can get a sense of what they already know, what they want to know and what they can cope with. You could say things like, do you have any questions about what I've said? Are there any words or pictures in your mind that you would like to share with me? Or simply pause and allow them space to think for a few moments as they may just start asking questions without prompting. Be prepared to repeat information that your child may not process fully at first. And for children with special educational needs, try to provide visuals that you can show as well as talking. These could be symbols, pictures and key words to explain what you are saying. And you can also have some pictures of different emotions, perhaps emoji faces, that you can use to share with your child how you are feeling and encourage them to share how they feel too. Makaton have a bereavement book of symbols and I'll include the link below. I'll also include a link to a very simple free online book that you can use the words to help explain death to your child. It's important to reassure your child that there is no right or wrong way to feel or grieve. Everyone is different and that's okay. Children will show their feelings in different ways, from anger and tears to withdrawing into themselves and becoming very quiet. You should also prepare yourself for something called puddle jumping. Whilst as adults, our grief can be all-consuming and constant, sometimes children switch between experiencing grief to 
becoming lost in the moment of their play or other activities, and then suddenly switching back to grieving again. This is normal and just something to be aware of. You should also prepare yourself for some tricky questions that can be hard to answer in terms of facts, but also how they may make you feel emotionally. Have a look at the tricky question sheet I've linked below that can help you think about some types of questions your child may ask and how you might answer them. Just remember that it's okay to say if you don't know the answer to something. You can be honest with your child and then maybe ask, what's that like for you not knowing? And if you do have religious beliefs, then maybe reach out for support from leaders within your community, as many will be experienced in talking with families about death. You can also reach out to your child's school, as they should be able to support you through the bereavement process. You don't have to give all the information at once, but at some point it can help to prepare your child by explaining what will happen after the death. For example, if there will be ceremonies now or in the future. Again, think about visuals for children with additional needs. Your child may find comfort in being part of a ceremony. Perhaps they'd like to write something to share about what they loved about the person that has died. Or maybe choosing a special item that the loved one can be buried with. Again, there's no right or wrong process. You know your child best. Reading a story with your child, especially younger children, can help them to make sense of death and all the emotions they're seeing in the adults around them. There's a link to Macmillan Cancer's recommended book list below, which includes books for children with special educational needs, such as autism. It's okay to let your child see you cry, and you could think about how to model healthy ways to express emotions and coping strategies. For child-friendly resources, there are lots of mindfulness apps, and the Childline Calm Zone, linked below, has great activities for supporting children's well-being. For younger children, there's a wonderful book called How Are You Feeling Today? that explores different emotions and things children can do when they feel each emotion. You could read this with your child and have a go at doing some of the activities together. It's also really important to communicate with your child's school, as children often find it harder to pay attention, use language skills and remember information when they are grieving. Your school should be able to offer you support and if they haven't had recent training then please share with them my online course on trauma, bereavement and loss that is free during lockdown. You can find the link below. The course will help your child's teachers understand and plan how to support your child through the bereavement process and into the future. Children often find it hard to verbally express their thoughts and feelings so you could ask them to draw instead or point to pictures in a book. Don't pressure your child to tell you how they feel though. Just let them know you're there if they need you. It's natural as a parent to want to fix things and take our child's pain away. But rushing the process of grief isn't what your child needs. What they need is for you to hold their hurt. You do this by acknowledging their feelings and giving reassurance without necessarily offering solutions. So you might say, I wonder if you're feeling sad, angry, hurt. Or it seems you feel upset, worried, scared. Then give hugs if they like hugs. Let them know you will sit with them if they would like. And also offer to give them space, especially for older children, as they may want some time on their own. Try not to be afraid of silence. It's okay to just sit together and be sad together in silence for a bit. It can give your child space to gather their thoughts, take a moment to breathe through their emotions. And also think about sensory comforts, especially if your child has sensory processing needs. You know your child best, so think about what helps them feel physically cosy, comfortable and reassured. My final suggestion is to show your child different ways to safely express their feelings, especially if they're presented as angry or frustrated. Perhaps they could punch a pillow, scrunch or tear paper, use sensory toys, listen to music or paint. Creating memory boxes without any pressure to talk can also be a wonderful way, as a family, to stay connected with the person that has died, sharing memories or processing grief together. You could decorate a box together and then put in photos or items that represent memories of the person that has died. For example, an object that reminds your child of a place they went to with their loved one. 
I hope you have found these suggestions helpful. Please remember there are some fantastic charities that can offer support and advice, including free helplines. In particular, you may want to give your child links to Childline and Young Minds, and take a look at Winston's Wish or Cruise yourself. If someone you love is unwell, I wish them a speedy recovery. And if someone you love has died, then I'm sending you strength and hope through this difficult time.